It's one huge joke that the United States still lacks a high-speed rail system. Despite once having some of the world's most advanced railways a century ago, there isn't a single bullet train in sight, and the sole project under construction has faced huge challenges. However, a new company is attempting to introduce high-speed rail to the US within a few years, and surprisingly, it seems promising. So, here's the scoop on America's struggle to get high-speed rail going, and why this latest plan might be our best shot yet. Planning a trip between two big US cities, most folks would just say you've got two options. Either hit the road and drive, even if it takes forever, or catch a flight if it's too far. Trying to get people to choose trains isn't a walk in the park. Trains don't sound so reliable. You can't blame them though, because the US is so outdated when it comes to railways. But did you know that this wasn't always the case? About 200 years ago, the US laid down its initial railroads, and for over a century following that, the country sported one of the world's most advanced and heavily utilized railway networks. However, things took a turn in the mid-1900s. The jet age arrived, making it possible for people to zip across the country in no time. Simultaneously, Americans started falling head over heels for cars, and in the 1950s, we birthed the interstate highway system. By the time the 60s rolled in, car travel had shot up almost four times since the mid-40s, and there were nearly 15 times as many plane trips. As cars and airplanes gained serious popularity, many of the engineers who used to work on railways either switched tracks or called it a day, and they were replaced by people studying aerospace. So the talent pool kind of shrank. But even though rail travel was on the decline, the US still had some grand ideas for it. In 1965, following Japan's introduction of the Shinkansen system, President Johnson swiftly devised a plan. Over the span of more than 10 years, they conducted high-speed trials along the so-called Northeast Corridor, reaching speeds surpassing 150 miles per hour. By 1969, services were operating at speeds of up to 120 mile off, not significantly slower than those in Japan. However, over the past 50 years, the disparity has grown wider. Other players joined the competition and surged ahead. Currently, the fastest trains in the US belong to Amtrak's Acela line, operating along the Northeast Corridor. They can reach speeds of up to 150 miles per hour, albeit for a limited distance. However, when you compare this to high-speed rail lines in countries like China, France, and Spain, which can hit around 200 miles per hour, it's clear there's no real competition. Now, before we dive deeper, what speed does a train need to hit to be considered high speed? While there's no official definition, the International Union of Railways sets the bar at a minimum of 155 miles per hour. Unfortunately for Amtrak, their flagship Acela service falls just short. Nevertheless, the US is making efforts to catch up. In December 2023, the Federal Railroad Administration announced a hefty $8 billion in new funding for passenger rail projects, including high-speed rail. One such project is the California High-Speed Rail, currently underway between LA and San Francisco. However, it's been plagued with issues. Eight years in, less than half is complete, and none of it is close to the main cities. The cost has ballooned to over $100 billion, and acquiring the necessary land has proven to be a significant challenge. When someone knows you need their land and you've already invested a lot into your project with contracts in place, the property owner might not feel compelled to quickly resolve your problem. They might hold out for more money, particularly when issues like eminent domain remain contentious in the US. Then there's Texas Central, still in the early study phase, and Cascadia, which just got federal funding for the planning stage. Both are not happening anytime soon. So, is it a waiting game now for the California project to eventually cross the finish line, whenever that may be? Not if someone has anything to say about it. Yes, you guessed it. Another plan is on the table, and it's making swift progress. Now, back to this new high-speed rail proposal. What makes it so intriguing? Well, for starters, the company behind it just pulled off another railway project that many doubted would happen. Known as Brightline, it connects Orlando and Miami with the fastest trains outside the Northeast Corridor, hitting speeds of 125 miles per hour. 
While it might not be high speed per se, constructing any new railway in the US has become quite a challenge. So, how did they manage to pull it off? A significant factor in the success of Brightline is that it marks the first privately funded rail line in the country in over a century with a cost of $6 billion. Rather than relying solely on public funding, Brightline garnered support from Wall Street to set these sleek new trains in motion. This encompassed work on over 50 bridges, including the almost century-old St. Lucie River Bridge. The construction involved innovative techniques like the boxjacking method, which positioned 3,000-ton concrete sections under two roadways with hydraulic jacks. Despite the challenges, a substantial portion of the work focused on upgrading existing infrastructure, much of which operates on tracks owned by the Florida East Coast Railway, sharing the same parent company as Brightline. For the entirely new section between Coco and Orlando, Brightline capitalized on a state policy allocating right-of-way next to highways for new rail lines. The decision to venture into passenger rail came when Brightline was acquired by a Wall Street firm, and they opted to use their right-of-way for that purpose. This strategy, which involves converting underused freight rail lines into passenger routes, is viewed as a savvy move for private operators. Now, turning to the new high-speed rail plan, the company is eyeing a much more ambitious project on the opposite side of the country. Known as Brightline West, it's a $12 billion high-speed railway connecting Las Vegas and Southern California all the way to Los Angeles. According to Brightline, this will be America's first true high-speed rail line, boasting top speeds of at least 186 miles per hour. Moreover, Brightline West has secured a $25 million grant for design and construction granted in June 2023 and enjoys bipartisan support from officials in both states. While the funding gap still needs attention, there's a potential challenge along the route at the Cajon Pass, nestled between the San Bernardino and San Gabriel mountain ranges. With its steep grades, even freight trains find it challenging. High-speed trains need flat ground, requiring them to slow down in this critical section. Despite these hurdles, Brightline West appears to be a promising candidate to complete before its counterpart in California. Based on estimates from the California High Speed Rail Project, there's a considerable likelihood that Brightline West could finish constructing its line, connecting Los Angeles and San Francisco, before California High Speed Rail does. The history of America's struggles with high speed rail is a well known story, and many have resigned themselves to the idea that it might never happen. However, with the surprise success of Brightline in Florida, the company is confident it can replicate its achievements on the other side of the country, taking a significant step forward. Whether this venture will encounter setbacks or mark the realization of the American dream remains to be seen. Well, that's about it. Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Do consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one.